So they sent me to the prison system, and I went in the chain gang, and they tightened, mm -hmm. chained me up, you know, chained my ankles, chained my ears, chained my mm -hmm. chained to 24 other people in this chain gang, and all these shotgun guys were around uh, escorting us into this bread bin and locking us in the back. And they lock us all in the back, and he opens his little drawer up at the front, and he hands cigarettes out. And 23 out of 24 people take a cigarette and start smoking. I didn't smoke yeah. cigarettes at the time and didn't have any interest in it, but I thought, oh, this is really curious. Here I'm going to jail for smoking this... Uh, one plant. One plant, and they're handing <laughs> no, it down. No, <laughs> this no, other this one. more toxic one. It's more toxic and more deadly. It kills <laughs> thousands of people a year. <laughs> Looking at this chart, it kind of proves Sunshine Kelly's theory about handing out tobacco, which is now killing over 440,000 people a year, and marijuana is at zero. And this is a government chart. And I'm not saying they should be handing out marijuana in prison, of course not. But why would they pick the number one killer in the world to hand out to prisoners? This is a little video that I found that I thought I would share with you about cigarettes and what they do to our bodies. There are over 30 harmful substances in cigarette smoke, including alkaloids, arsenic, nicotine, aldehydes, and others. Many of these are deadly poisons. Of special significance is benzopyrene, which is one of the known cancer-producing agents. So do cigarettes get very hot when they burn, and does that affect the chemicals that are in those cigarettes when you inhale them into your lungs? As the tobacco burns, it reaches temperatures as high as 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, and this process causes physical and chemical changes in the nicotine, tars, and other substances. Most of these products are gaseous at high temperatures, and they become part of the smoke that is carried into the respiratory passages and absorbed through the mucous membrane and the tissues. Foremost among these substances is carbon monoxide, which is the killer in automobile exhaust. How does carbon monoxide affect your lungs and your body? In order to illustrate the harmful effects of even small amounts of carbon monoxide upon the body, let's take a look at the breathing cycle. When you breathe clean air, oxygen enters the lungs, where it finds its way to the red corpuscles of the bloodstream. The heart then pumps the blood to the body cells, which in turn utilize the oxygen. As you smoke, carbon monoxide, the poisonous gas we have mentioned, is attracted to the red corpuscles just as the oxygen was, only more strongly. These carbon monoxide molecules take over some of the red blood corpuscles, decreasing the capacity of the blood to carry oxygen to the tissues. In other words, they prevent the oxygen from reaching the red blood cells, thereby reducing the oxygen transportation by 5 to 15 percent. This is one of the reasons why the smoker cannot run as fast or as far as he could if he didn't smoke. So if this chart isn't scary enough, wait till you see this commercial done by the cigarette companies in the early 50s in response to scientists beginning to question just how healthy cigarettes are for your body. Is it true, Miss O'Brien, that you visited a famous throat specialist every week for a 30-day period and that he carefully examines your throat each time? It is. Is it true that you smoke camels and only camels during those 30 days? That's true. Will you tell us what the doctor told you? He said there wasn't any sign of irritation in my throat from smoking camels. And have you anything to add to that statement? Yes. My doctor's report just proved what my own throat told me about camels. They're wonderfully mild. And the flavor? Ah. Oh. Thank you, Miss O'Brien. And happy smoke. If your good health isn't all that it should be, we can't help you. Better call on your MD. If it's double talk you wish, we confess that's not our 
But if you want a treat instead of a treatment, if you want full measure of deep down smoking pleasure, if you want a treat instead of a treatment, smoke old goals. Another bad actor in cigarettes is nicotine. Nicotine is an alkaloid and works upon the nerve centers of the brain that regulate the heartbeat and breathing. In addition, nicotine causes the small blood vessels to get smaller or constrict. There is substantial evidence that continuous smoking causes the small blood vessels to lose their elasticity, and this increases the possibility of heart trouble and blood vessel diseases. The heavy smoker smokes the equivalent of a cigarette over six feet long every day, or one about the length of a coffin. But among the real threats in smoking are the killers known as the carcinogens, the cancer-producing agents found in the tars condensed out of the tobacco smoke and deposited into the bronchial tubes leading to the lungs. And with a person's constant smoking day after day, the carcinogens build up a mighty force. From the bronchial tubes, the carcinogens move into the air tubes of the lungs, where they begin to antagonize systematically the cells of the air tubes. why the cells change and become abnormal. But they begin to grow and affect those cells around them until the victim finds himself hopelessly afflicted with lung cancer. A non-smoker has about one chance in 270 of developing this disease, while a man who continues to smoke two packs a day has only about one chance in 10. And 95% of those afflicted will eventually die from the cancer. Marijuana never killed anybody, ever, ever, <laughs> ever. In the whole history of the drug, it's never right. one person can, death can be accumulated to marijuana. It's ridiculous, ridiculous law. Now, I am not promoting the use of marijuana. Medical marijuana, yes. Now, I find it amazing that in a prison system, they would hand out a plant that you smoke that is killing on an average of 435,000 people a year and not one person has ever been prosecuted, arrested, or questioned for that. And then we have medical marijuana, one of the most illegal substances in America that has never killed anyone and people get arrested for it every single day. I put a link below for a documentary that Dr. Sanjay Gupta did, and it's about Charlotte, and the medical marijuana is called Charlotte's Web, and it is amazing what this did for her, so check it out, it's awesome.